Hi and welcome to uh, 2018 Paper 1, Leave and Start Ordinary Level. And we're working here on question 8. So, as usual, I would suggest you pause the video and just have a go at the question. And then, if you can't get it, just look at the answer on the next page uh, as the video progresses. If you want to set a note I'm working off, uh, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. That email address will be in the description below. So, question 8 here, okay. Um, now there's two parts A and B here on this page, uh, both or 10 C marks. So we just to pick up some good marks. The amount in appropriate units, so we're not being given the units here, so just use the word units, of a certain medic medicinal drug in the bloodstream, T hours after it has been taken, can be estimated by the function. Okay, so a drug, just as a bit of biological background, has an effect at a certain dosage. So if your dosage goes below that in the blood, it won't be having an effect. You want to know how long it takes for the liver to remove it in order to make sure you have the correct dosage. And that goes on a lot in um, the medical field to try to figure out what's the, the best amount for, for an, an individual. Now, with any model like this, in this case it's a cubic equa uh, model, biggest power is three, um, that's designed to satisfy the needs of a certain range of people. So that's one of the reasons medications sometimes have different effects on different people. Uh, we might be all the same species, but ultimately we're, each individual is different. Anyway, so that's a bit of science. In this sense here, the function of the calling it C, okay, uh, C of T, so it's, uh, the, the um, I'm not sure why they're picking C, okay, the concentration. The concentration of drug in the blood is a function of time. As time passes, the liver removes more of it, the concentration decreases. And it's given by this jumble of, or to us, of, of terms, but that's usually worked out based on like uh, empirical data. So you can make up the model. That's uh, way beyond our, our uh, terms of reference here in even sort of past level. But that's something that people with you know, degrees and PhDs and research companies would be involved in. We're told here that um, time is between zero and nine hours, I'm sure, nine hours. And that T is the number of hours. It could be any number. It could be eight and a half, whatever. Um, we'll see in a minute we have to graph it. But for part A here, it should be pretty simple. It says use the drug, so I'll start again, uh, use the drug amount uh, function C of T uh, to show that the amount of the drug in the bloodstream four hours after the drug has been taken is 224 units. So you're told your answer, right? you're told your answer, okay? And you basically have to put your unknown, okay, or you, if the hour is a time, into the function and see is your answer 224. So I'm gonna to go to the answer I've done in here, just because it's neater. Um, so basically, yes, is two to four equal to uh, two to four on the, on the right hand side when you're looking at the time be at four hours? So I put four in instead of t all the way across. I uh, put it to the calculator, and I end up getting two to four equals two to four. So I probably should have said yes or true or whatever. Yeah, but that's the mathematical step there. Now I would argue in a question like this. Okay, let's say you really have no box notion what you're up to. Okay, and you're trying to pick up the, the low part here. You're Given a function here, now this often people get confused here, they go C of T, okay? That's two things, C times T. But that's just the T there, I normally write like here, I C and the T just really small at the bottom. It's just in function notation, you're showing what your input is in the in the notation. Okay, and it's, that's, it's, got, it's got its uses, especially with computational uh, maths and using you know, IT and computers and stuff. Uh, if you're kind of going here, like, what do I do? Okay, you're told t, t equals four hours. That should be hopefully be obvious enough. What are you going to do? You might as well put the four in. Okay, there's nothing really actually can do. If you put it in, you might as well solve it. And you would have ended up, even not knowing what you're doing, getting two to four, which should have probably got the 10 marks, okay? Just depends on how strict they are with the marking scheme uh, at any particular year. Um, and that's it, okay? Now, part B here, okay, um, so to start off, the, the table is not filled in. You have when you know, t is involved in every term here. So if t is zero, well, every one of them is going to turn zero. So your concentration will be zero. Okay, now that's at injection. Um, from then on, okay, you or whatever way, actually whatever way they're taking it, okay, it may be taken orally, and so the the concentration then will go up, reach a peak, and then the, the as the liver takes over and starts taking it down, um, it will go down to like you know, a low dose. And maybe down to zero, okay? So we'd expect our numbers to go up and then come down, just by logical, okay? You're digesting it, absorbing to your blood, it's going up. 
as it, as it passes through the liver, it's getting taken down again. So eventually it goes up to it's all absorbed and then decreases over time to, to whatever, to a minimum amount. Now, that's not really necessary for you to know. All you're being asked here to do is, okay, for each of the variables, okay, it's changing T1, 2, 3, 4, whatever, put that into your uh, function and what output do you get? What answer do you get? You know, we already have 2 to 4. That's what we did in part A. So I've done a sample calculation here. I've done it for t equals 2. Just like I did with part A, I put it into the function, put it through the calculator, up comes 118, and that's my, um, my second one. If I go to 3, I get that number, 175.5. Now, you only really need to show one sample calculation, but I know a lot of people would like to do all of them. Really, if you have a sample calculation on your calculator, you can back... You know, and just delete the two and replace it with three, 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 find your answer. Replace it with five, 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 and find your answer. And that's more efficient. Okay. And once you have the table filled in, job done. Okay, so in part C here now we've been asked to graph it. Okay, so I've taken the, the graph paper here from the exam paper. I put in the table so it's all on the one page. Okay. Now I let you, if you have the notes off me, okay, that's easier to draw. If you want to redraw it and just practice it to see, can you get the shape? We'll see now in a second. Should be pretty handy. Core geometry is really all this is. Okay, or graphing, I suppose you could have your statistics. Uh, now, I put it in there that these arrows here are for the next part. Okay, there's the answers for part um, a D and E, whatever. But the graph here is the, the heavy black line. So when the time is zero, the concentration is zero. When the time is one, the concentration is 57.5, etc. Now, if you recognize these shapes, okay, it's going up, okay, being absorbed, and then the concentration starts going down as the liver, the action takes over. It doesn't actually add nine hours, of course, down to zero, but the dosage is, at that stage, uh, a little less than 125, okay? So it will continue, but we're not really, we're not actually worried about that in this particular scenario, okay? Now, eventually, we'll go back down to zero as the liver removes the, practically all of it. Now, that's a quadratic equation, okay? If you recognize that shape, okay? So, well, yeah, that's job done. Hopefully you, yeah, you had a good chance of getting the five marks for that. Okay, now part D here says, use your graph to estimate each of the following values. In each case, show your work on the graph above. Okay. So part one here says, the amount of the drug in the bloodstream after three and a half hours. Part two here says, how long after taking the drug will the amount of the drug in the bloodstream be 100 units? Okay. So there's two parts here. I think there's, if I'm not mistaken, there's two. Yes, yeah, so I didn't put in that tendency. There is two separate, there's five marks for the first part, 10 marks for the second, okay? Um, I put the answers here, but I've, I, they were already on the graph, okay? So the first part one here says, I find time is three and a half hours. So find that on your graph, okay? And bring it up to touch the graph, bring it across, read off the concentration at three and a half hours, okay? I read that off as 200, no, I probably should have put here units. I'm going to put U for units, okay? The second one says, how long after taking the drug will the amount of drug in the bloodstream be 100 units? So you find 100 units on the concentration, bring it across, drop it down, and it's around one and three quarters. You could say one and three quarters hours. Uh, does it give you any stipulation? No. One and three quarters hours would work. Uh, I'm putting in one hour 45 minutes just to, because that's kind of how you deal with time. Um, that's D part two. Okay, hopefully I'm not going too fast. Now part E here says, use the drug amount function, C of T, you know, I, I won't even bother going through that, okay, just the function you're given, to find in terms of T, so let me put people off, the rate at which the drug, so the rate at which the drug amount is changing after T hours. Now if you see rate and change in a question, that's differentiation. What the slope of something is, is the rate of change of one variable in relation to another. And we're using dealing with y and x and how fast y changes in relation to as x changing. But that can be any concept. Um, we use that awful lot. I mean, this is what differentiation is for, is find the rate of change of, say, for example, volume and time would be the flow rate from, it, from something. Um, there's any number of concepts that we are concerned with knowing they're, how they're changing in relation to each other. And really, science and engineering, that's, you know, if you do an engineering degree or science, you would do an awful lot of differentiation. Now, with that said, so if you realize that it's differentiation, well, go ahead and differentiate it. Okay, so I've done it here. So that's my original function. So I put in this, now it's function notation, that little apostrophe or whatever, which was the name for it, um, just means that this function has been differentiated. 
The reason we need to know that is if something has been differentiated, we need to be able to reverse it. There's a fundamental principle of maths in that everything in maths must be reversible. If it can't be reversed, it's not correct. So if we want to reverse this, we could by a process called integration. Now, integration is not something we would do at pass leave cert, but it will be on the honours, and you'll, you know, if you go to third level for science, it'll be something you'll, you'll, you'll need to have to learn. Okay? Um, now it's, it really is, I won't say a simple process, but it's just, again, like anything else, it's just a process. So if I'm differentiating these three terms, okay, now the first step here is to multiply the power by the number in front of the, the variable. So that's minus 1. So 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. And the second step of differentiation is you take 1 away from the power. So 3 take away 1 is the 2 here. So that's that term differentiated. Then move along. Exact same thing. Power by number in front. So 2 times 4.5 is 9. Take 1 away from the power. 1 from 2 is 1. That's, that's there. And I didn't bother writing the 1, but I could, I could have if you wanted to. Don't need it, though. Uh, last thing here now, what happens in a situation like this is technically okay, it's the power here is 1. So 1 times 54 is 54. Take 1 from the power, you end up with t to the power of 0. Now, in the rules of powers, n to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So therefore, that 54 times 1 is 54. So we just learned to learn off that if you have a variable on its own, it just, and you differentiate it, it goes away. Okay. So. Um, no, that's it. Okay, so part two here, okay, is saying use your answers in part E1 to find the rate at which the drug amount is changing after four hours. Okay, okay, so here we're focusing now on part two. So it says use your answer to part E1. So the answer you have here. So whatever answer you, if you couldn't get part one done, just declare some easy answer that'll be accepted as correct in part two. As I should follow the method of part two correct. Uh, from E1 to find the rate at which the drug amount is changing after four hours. Okay. Now, it's the important thing here is that the, f the four hours is specific. So if you use your rate of change equation, your slope equation, the one you differentiated in part one, and just put in t equals four, uh, that comes out to be as plus 42, and that's in units per hour. Okay. So it's decreasing, or sorry, the rate which is changing by 42 units per hour at that point. Remember the graph here, okay? At, it's, it's constant, the slope of it is constantly changing. Okay. Now, the last part here, parts three and four, says use your answer to part E1 to find the maximum amount of the drug in the bloodstream over the first eight hours. Now, importantly, here's the maximum. Okay. So this is the maximum in question, which we've actually already had in this paper, which is weird they ask it twice, okay? But I'll just go to the answer now. It's a bit cluttered in the, just for space reasons, but if you see here, okay, it says... Uh, to find the maximum or minimum, follow the step. You differentiate your function, which we've already done. That was the answer from part E1. Uh, put your function equal to zero, okay? Because at the maximum, the slope is zero. I explained that in the previous question. Um, you solve it then, and you use that value to find your um, unknown, okay? So we're told here now that or we, we, from the previous part, okay, we have the differentiated function. We put it equal to zero here. Now, that's a quadratic, okay, you can solve it. Now, to simplify that, I've divided across by negative uh, 3. So, negative 3 t squared divided by negative 3 is 1 t squared. I suppose you say 9 divided by 3 is minus 3. Sorry, 9 divided by minus 3 is minus 3, yeah. Uh, 54 divided by, divided by minus 3 is minus 18. This is just easier to solve because the numbers are smaller. Um, when I factorize that, I got t minus 6 is one factor. t plus 3 is the other. The value of those factors, when I put them both those equal to zero, they end up with t equals six or t equals negative three. Now the t equals negative three you can ignore because you can't have negative time. So we're going with the answer t equals six. Put that back into your original equation, and I got um, the value of the y value as such, or the the, the output when t equals six. Now came out as two seventy units. Job done. Okay, so part four, use your answer to part E1, so again, the differentiator function, to show that the drug taken in your bloodstream is decreasing seven hours after the drug has been taken. So I'm going to put seven in again. You, a lot of these questions, as long as you use the right, the right formula, just throw the number in. You're either here, if you throw nine in, you would have got something. Um, part four, uh, and throw seven into the differentiator function, and out comes negative 30, and that's units per hour. 
And because it's negative, that means it's decreasing. So you need to say that in some fashion. Uh, if you do, then that's going to give you the full five marks. Now that's part four. I think it's the end of question eight, okay? So it's a long question. Um, easy enough if you know what you're doing, but if you don't, I'm sure it would not, not so easy. Practice makes perfect. See you on question nine.